So I attached all of these cases together on the inside with just some drywall screws so this whole thing is attached. And then to start off the day, I could remove my temporary spacers and add real spacers. The molding for this room is really thick. You could see it there. It's like seven inches. So I'm going to be adding like a three inch spacer on top of my two by four so that when they have to install the molding, they have something to nail into and as well as something for my false fronts to sit on top of. So you can see I just ripped some plywood uh, sheets and just tack them to the front of, of my pieces. I checked to make sure my molding would sit and I just use butt joints in most cases as well as some angled in the corners because you won't see this at all. This is all going to be completely covered. And then I made it a little bit lower than my molding just so that the mold, there won't be a gap between the door and the molding. The molding will, will rest just on the bottom edge of these door fronts. Um, I'm calling them door fronts because I'm going to be making these exactly like I would cabinet doors. So I started by ripping down some poplar. This is I'm making two inch pieces for my rails and my styles. And I used poplar right from the hardware store. Um, you could get your own and, and plane it and rip it down, but usually this stuff is pretty consistent and it's just a huge time saver to be able to use it right out of the store. Um, the doors are going to be pretty small, so on these 8-10 foot sections of poplar, there's usually some bows and I usually cut them down to rough size just so that um, you have more consistent grooves when you're, when you're cutting the grooves into these shorter pieces. And since my inserts are only going to be about 3 16 of an inch, I can't use my quarter inch dado stack on these. So I just mount my piece a little off center and then I could flip it and cut a, a perfectly centered groove down all of these pieces. You could see I'm just running it through once, flipping it and running it through again and then I'll have a nice centered groove which is really important when it comes time to make the tongues on your rails which I'm doing here. This is a test, test piece. I'm testing the distance of the tongue I need as well as the depth because you want to cut equally on both sides in order to fit in place. Then I could go and take a rough measurement off of the first one I'm making and you have to account for the added thickness of that tongue going into your groove which is about a half an inch is what I usually do. So then that I could cut those top styles and test fit with, with um, my molding there. So I do have a very detailed video of how I make these doors on my channel. I'm going through it pretty quick, quickly so that it's not a super long video. But you can see that now I know the, the thickness I need for all of my rails because I got it right on that first one. I'm just going through. There's a stop on my rate alarm saw and I'm cutting all the ones I'll need because they'll all be the exact same thickness in order to get the height that I need. And I think once I added that plywood, the rails ended up being, I think I needed the vertical to be about 10 inches. So to account for the thickness of your styles and the, the groove, these were in the seven inch range. So once I had that, I could go through and start making my other doors. I ended up just just cutting the, the tongues on all of these at once. It's a little time consuming the way I'm doing it. You could mount a dado stack in there and cut them all at once, but but it's not terrible to do it this way. So you can see I'm going back and kind of removing the marks left by all these kerf cuts. The kerf cuts are going to leave ridges on the wood, so a perfect fit is going to be removing the ridges and then it will fit into that groove nicely. And since I didn't plane or joint any of this lumber, sometimes your groove is a little thicker or thinner in spots or your tongue the same the same issue so on all these doors there's usually a little bit of fitting involved to get them to all fit nicely but once I get a nice tight fit um, I can test fit it on the piece and this one came together quite nicely you go off frame test it on the piece and then um, I could continue this is actually when I I cut all of those those rails because I had Let's see, two, five, seven, seven doors, I believe. So I just cut all those rails at once. This is test fitting it in place. And then I'll have to cut an angle off the one edge of these doors. So this is my insert material. It's just very thin plywood. I believe they sell this 
as quarter inch ply, I think, but it's not a quarter inch. It's a little thinner. It's more like three sixteenths. And then um, this will all be the same thickness because my doors are all the same height, but then I'll just have to measure for the width and, and test fit all these pieces. But this fits in there quite nicely. And then that is basically what the door is going to look like once everything's back in place. Now on this, they wanted these doors to match the kitchen, and the kitchen is getting redone as well. And there's a slight chamfer on all the edges of the doors, which is what I'm doing now. And I could get away with just freehanding this on my tabletop because my doors are such a nice tight fit. They're not going to come apart as I'm cutting this. Now you can buy bits that will cut this um, all your groove and all of that in one go. But since I'm not a cabinet shop, I don't like to buy specialty tools. So it's really easy just after I make that chamfer to square off the corners of my pieces. Once it's painted, you won't even be able to tell. So then I could glue this together and I only glue um, the tongues into the groove. I don't want to glue my panel because you want that panel to free float in inside that frame. So the panel fits into place and the nice thing about these doors is you have a little bit of leeway because they're really facade doors you're not going to see the edges or the back of this so once i had everything in place i used some clamps just to pull all of my pieces together and then um, i check for square if they're not square this is going to be a nightmare to put together your edges won't won't line up and then i just sink some brads into the back to hold it in place so here's that 30 degree cut and this is where I make somewhat of a mistake even though this 30 degree works out perfectly you could see now the thickness of my rails is is off because I cut one but didn't cut the other one so even though cutting then the edges of the back side there 30 degrees my one side panel could slide up it just wasn't gonna work so a little update on this um, I actually had to backtrack and remake these two side panels um, because I was trying to do butt joints and miter joints up here and then miter joints and butt joints down here um, none of my verticals were lining up they were a little too thick and it wasn't really bothering me but then um, at the corners I was getting gaps and everything so I just cut my losses and I did what I should have done the first time around and I'm um, mitering all of my edges so now you could see I ended up mitering this one instead of keeping it it flat and these are all still 30 degrees and then I re had to remake this door I was able to bust apart the old doors and and reuse um, some pieces which was nice but you can see I mitered that one and I mitered this one as well so now this one can butt right against it I had made these two front ones which are still still the right size so now I'm just gonna remake this door and I mean, in the scheme of life, remaking these is, is not terrible. They're uh, pretty quick to make, but um, it's just kind of a testament to why you should do things right the first time around. I was trying to cut corners and make this go a little bit faster, but it ended up working so much easier um, with these miters. So then this is that finished view of those um, five inner panels and I left that one long for the time being because the side panel is actually going to come in front of it so you'll see that side in front and the nice the one plus side to miscutting those was I also realized that if the side panel is going to be what you see I didn't want um, the rails to be the intersection of my door because then you'll have two end grains showing on the top and bottom so I recut all my rails so now my rails are going to be straight you could see that new new feature on these doors the side rails are go go from top to bottom so that when you're looking at it you could see in this video you won't see the end grain it just makes for a little bit of a nicer look so I would have had to recut those panels anyway you, and I left those side panels long so I could scribe them to the walls before I installed this I made a quick template on the front because I'm going to be remaking a template for the top so I just have it spaced a half inch off that inner edge so then this is that frame in the space and I didn't get a ton of footage of this because this is an active construction site I didn't want to be filming while people were trying to get stuff done you can see how it fits in that corner and um, the gaps are pretty good 
and then um, this is just marked for the outlet and I didn't actually cut this the guys on site cut for the HVAC just so that when they do the molding they'll have um, a space for that HVAC to come out it was level in first try because this is a new floor which was kind of nice you could see just how I have it set up so that the guys I'm not laying the molding either the guys could come through and lay molding and I just towed this to the floor in a couple spots from the front so if they had to make minor adjustments they could it was only screwed in from the front so I could go around and start placing my cases and um, once again, I'm making sure that molding will fit nicely so the guys could come through and run the molding perfectly around the inner portion of that case. So I'm testing it. This isn't actually the door that goes there, but I was testing it with one of the doors. So once I had that in place, I could just go around the room. There's two outlets. You could see I cut out for the outlets and just reattach all these people pieces. It lined up pretty good. There was some tweaking to be done, but I already had them attached to my shop so I could just go through and attach them. The one side ended up working perfectly. I didn't have to describe it to the wall at all. The right hand side, you could see the gap I had. So I used a level to make a mark and then I just cut that with, I think I had a jigsaw with me. I cut it and planed it and now you see that one side fits perfectly against that wall and the thickness I took off was so that edge was square and then this is everything in place um, I caulked the seams of the doors and it's completely attached now at this point and you can see the opening for the HVAC, HVAC there in the front so in the last video I'll be showing you how I make this top but I wanted to show this image to show you how the guys place the the floor molding um, it was easier for them to do it. I wasn't going to argue it's not my most favorite thing to do, but the way they addressed the what would be the register for the HVAC is really nice. They just went through and made some slots so it turned out really seamline, seamline and nice on, on that piece.